Hey, what's up everybody? To Daryl White here, Senior Pastor of the Forward Christian Center, and I am so excited that you've decided to stop right here for just one word. I want to invite you to pay attention to this message that went forth in this worship experience on today. It's a message entitled, I'd Rather Be Spiritual Than Tradition. I know it's going to create a little bit of friction, a little bit of ambiguity, but if we just sit back and relax and just allow for this word to minister to us, I believe it's one that's really going to transform our mindset about the God that we serve and the church that we are. Listen to this. I'd rather be spiritual than traditional. So, Father, I pray now in Jesus' name that you would give us what we need in this moment to embrace the full meaning and define where we are. Give us the lesson that goes along with the blessing. And we will give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, Mark chapter 7. I don't really have a sermon, but I just want to drop this in your spirit. This is just a quick word for you to take with you. And I need you to gravitate to this so that you'll know what kind of ministry you're connected to. And I believe that God is doing something and we need to be aware of what it is. Mark chapter 7 verses 5 through 7. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said unto them, Well, hath Esaias or Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. Uh, in this moment, I want to drop this word in your spirit. I'd rather be spiritual than traditional. I'd rather be spiritual than traditional. I want you to declare that out loud only if you mean it. I'd rather be spiritual than traditional. It is never my intent or my will to be insensitive to the sentiments and the sentimental values that we hold near and dear to us within the parameters of our subculture, which of course is the church. But it is always my intention to be biblical and in order for me to do that, I must drop this bombshell on us and admit that there are at least eight times in the New Testament where traditions and being traditional, there's at least eight times where it is mentioned. Of those eight times, Jesus makes mention of about five of them. And the interesting thing that I discovered is that of the five times that Jesus made reference to them, not one time of the five times did Jesus have anything good to say about them. And so now we are faced with a churchological conundrum. I created the term churchological. You won't find it in a dictionary. But we are now faced with a conundrum, and that is the thing that many of us hold near and dear to our hearts is the thing that Jesus had nothing really good to say about. So the question is, are we going to hold to the things that we hold near and dear to our heart? Or are we going to evolve our hearts, minds, and spirits in the direction 
that Christ would have us to go. Because if the truth be told, and I might as well just spill the beans, we have to be careful in this current age of church because you have two types of churches. You have a church that is led by the Holy Spirit, and then you have church that is led by people. And whenever you have church that is led by people, you have a political church. Because uh, politics is really only about a person's preference at the end of the day. And the problem with that is the church was never designed to operate according to our preference but it was designed to operate according to his purpose. And so the question now has to be raised, am I going to embrace the thing that Jesus had very little good to say about, or am I going to embrace the one who, by the way, in case I forgot to tell you, don't let me forget to tell you, he's the head of the church. For Jesus declared, upon this rock, I will build y'all's church. Now, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Which deductively suggests, maybe, just maybe, if it's not his church, then the gates of hell will prevail. But if it is his church, the gates of hell, Hades, the grave shall not be able to hold it down. And so we really have to embrace this moment because if, if we do not embrace the reality of this moment, we will miss God trying to please God. And it is impossible to please God without God. If you're going to please God, then you are going to need God to help you to please God. Y'all all right? I have to check on you in messages like this because if you're not careful, you tell some folks that it's not in the Bible that you got to wear white on the first Sundays Look at somebody and tell them, you don't have to. You really don't. You don't have to. I'm going to just let that marinate for a minute because I want somebody to be okay. We'll be missing God, trying to please God. And the only problem is we'll be trying to please God with stuff that he really don't want. Have, have, you, have you ever run into someone who wanted to bless you, but what they gave you, you couldn't use it? I, you know, I like cars, you know what I'm saying? I, I like them. They cool, you know. But... If you brought me a pink Cadillac, don't be mad if I don't ever drive it. Give it to somebody that it would be conducive to their taste and their liking. Because if you're not careful, you'll mess around being angry, calling people ungrateful because they don't appreciate what you did when what you did was not beneficial. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. You just don't want to admit it. 
And the same thing with many of our traditions, we think that we are appeasing the heart of God when God is saying, I would rather have your obedience than your sacrifices. You see, we, we misconstrue that whole statement. Obedience is better than sacrifice is what we tell our kids when they don't do what we tell them. But that ain't got nothing to do with that. Obedience being better than sacrifice literally means and suggests that I would rather you do what I told you to do than for you to give me a gift to try to smooth me over because you were disobedient to what I told you to do. You see, I told you to clean your room. Don't, don't, don't go in there and bring me a bottle of water and say, here you go, and think that because you brought me some water that it excuses the fact that you disobeyed my original instruction to clean your room. Who am I speaking to in this room that hears what I'm saying? So now we have homework. Each of us has to go on each has, that's right. Each of us has to go home and take a close look in the mirror and ask ourselves, am I going to be spiritual and be holy or be traditional and look holy? Because operating in my church traditions make me look holy to people but when I operate in spirituality I become holy unto God mm -hmm. which means which means that I don't have to cover up my unholiness with a white suit or a white dress I don't have to show off what the Bible says is the form of godliness yet denying the power thereof but I can actually be holy which is why which is why which is why I thank God that I'm free from this now which is why as a preacher and as your pastor I can stand here in a pair of vans and some jeans and a t-shirt and feel comfortable in the skin that I'm in without feeling guilty about not wearing a three-piece suit because everything in a suit don't mean it's suited for God. I wish I had somebody that'll roll with your boy today. And just because you wearing a long dress don't mean you keep yourself pure. So we got to go home. I'm going to try to get to my points I sent y'all. We got to go home and face the music. Am I going to be traditional when it comes to my spiritual worship experience? Or am I going to embrace the spirit of the matter, which means the most? Because if not, if not, here's number one. Might as well get to my points now. Here we go. All right. If we do not embrace what God wants us to have spiritually, write this down. Number one, you're going to find out that traditions, here it is, are man-made. They're man-made. Somebody came up with something. And because of their influence and their impact, they caused other people to flow within the vein of that which could have very well been vain in and of itself. How do you know that? How do you know that? Because I read my Bible. And around verse 5, Mark chapter 7, here's the question that was asked of Jesus. Why do not your disciples, I'm paraphrasing, practice washing their hands before they eat? Here it is, which was and is the tradition of the elders. Did you hear that? 
It's the tradition of our elders, which means this thing was passed down, not from God to the generation, but from the generation to the generation. Not saying that there's anything wrong with washing your hands. Let's be clear about that. In times like these anyway, look at somebody and tell them, wash your hands. But Jesus comes back to them with another statement that we're going to get to later. But the point that he's trying to submit to them and suggest to them, as I want to suggest to you on today, is when traditions carry their weight for so long over the course of evenings and time has its tendency to take its toll, there's something about us that have us believing that what the elders put in place is what God had ordained. So now, since time has taken its toll, it has become habit for me to do it. But not only has it become habit for me to do it, but now it has become holy for me to do it. And because it has become holy for me to do it, it's easy for me to make the mistake with a man-made ordeal to create stuff and have people thinking it's a Bible verse when it really ain't. Stuff like cleanliness. Go find that in the Bible. I'll wait. Let me drink power aid while y'all go find that scripture. Somebody at home looking for it. <laughs> I know it's in there. I'm going to prove it. So now, here it is. The issue of this man-made tradition, we're just dealing with this one. The issue of this man-made tradition is not that it is sinful if you don't wash your hands. It may not be sanitary, but you won't go to hell. And we got to pray for the church that will send you to hell for not upholding stuff that God never said. Can I tell you the problem with some of our cousin them churches? They got more rules than God. They have more policies than God has principles. Hurry up and smile before you have me thinking that You do know that anything man-made has a tendency to crumble. It has a tendency to go down. I thought I had the best car in the world until a few days ago the brakes started scrubbing. And I'm like, what? It rides smooth, it's cool, it's clean, I like it. You know, clean in terms of the ride. But as soon as I put my foot on the brakes and I heard that little sound and that little scrub, it hit me. Man made it. Watch this. Come here. Come here. If you focus on that which is man made, it may cause you to overlook the one that made man. So if I overlook the one that made man for that which is man made, then soon I will begin to hear the scrubbing of the brakes. Because he says, this is the tradition 
of our elders, watch this, and you don't make your disciples operate in the tradition of the elders. Now, if I had been Jesus, if I had been Jesus, y'all got to pray for me. You better be glad I ain't Jesus. Because I'd have asked this question. They touching their own food, ain't it? It's yours. I mean, I ain't putting my dirty hands on your food. If I want to eat my food without washing my hands, it's my food going into my body. That's what I would have said, but Jesus got more class than me. He helps them to understand, and they actually say it through their own mouth that it's man-made. But then secondly, write this down. Write this down. If, if, if you miss this, you're going you're gonna to miss the nitty-gritty of the message. I had to write this one down for you. When you operate and become more traditional than you are spiritual, here's what you do. You miss the mark. You miss it. You will aim low and still miss. How do I know they missed the mark? Because as soon as they said this to Jesus about these unwashed hands, Jesus said, has it not been written about you hypocrites? <laughs> Jesus is so amazing. He's so cool. I mean, he just called a spade a spade. He called it like it is, you know. I was just saying he was a little more nice than me, but the truth is, no, Jesus was just straight. He was a man's man. He said, y'all a bunch of hypocrites. <laughs> you got clean hands, but you got a dirty heart. <laughs> you still missing the mark. I mean, I mean, you got the best hand sanitizer. You stand in front of that kitchen sink and you wash your hands for at least 20 seconds like they tell you you're supposed to. <laughs> and you still filthy. He said, as a matter of fact, your filth started a long time ago. Your stink started stinking hundreds of years ago when the prophet Isaiah prophesied about you and said, these people will honor me with their lips. But their hearts are far from me. You're trying to be traditional, but you're missing the point. You're missing the mark. Watch this. He said, you, the stuff that come out of your mouth is pretty cool. But it is from the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. So basically, your mouth is speaking stuff that your heart don't feel. That means you lying to yourself. Because if from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, but your heart and your mouth are not on the same page, then your mouth ain't doing nothing but getting you in trouble because you just love your tradition so much. We missing the mark. Don't, don't you dare take away our men's day. Our women's day. Our hat day. If you're a deacon and you don't wear a black suit, oh boy! If you're a woman, some of y'all in trouble right now. If you ain't got on no dress, you better not have on no pants. You can't come to our church because God gonna get you. Do you know pantaloon didn't come out to a little over 500 and some years ago, which means when the scriptures was written, men didn't wear pants. So how are you going to talk about?
Look at somebody and tell them, don't miss the mark with your traditions. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. It doesn't mean be wild. But it does mean that I don't have to be bound with the stuff that people came up with so that they could control me. Because here it is. I'm going to go and get the last one while I'm out here so I can go and be free. Because when you miss the mark, here's number three. You misrepresent the master. Look at verse seven. Look at verse seven. I dare you to look at verse seven. When you look at verse seven, here's what you're going to see. Just so you'll know I didn't make it up. How be it in vain do they worship me? Here it is. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. He said, you teaching this stuff like it come out the book. And it doesn't come out the book. Can I tell you what's really going on? I wasn't going to tell you, but I, not only do I love you, but I like you. So I'm going to tell you what's really going on. They've come up, watch this, with the commandments that they can obey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, see, if I can't obey what God said because I find it kind of hard, let me come up with an adjacent amendment to the commandment so that I can obey something that's easy and convenient for me to do. Which means, which means, which means, um, let me come up with this tradition, with this God-made commandment. Here it is. Don't you walk across that pulpit. I'm messing up about 14 of y'all right now. Because you know in the church you grew up in, if you walked across that pulpit, them mothers and them grandmothers, they would snatch a knot in you. Don't you dare walk. Don't you dare. Walk across that pulpit. God will strike you down. You walk across that poor pit. You don't, you don't play. You don't walk across that poor pit. But what book, what scripture, what chapter, what verse? It's easy for me to not walk across the pool pit. I can just go around it. That's an easy commandment for me to follow. But the Bible says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So you won't walk across the pool pit, but you walk in the counsel of the ungodly. It is, it is, it is. It's the one right here. It's the one right. Cause this the one right here. Don't you dare touch that communion table. I'm dropping them. Boy, you touch that communion table. That's worse than walking across that pulpit right there. Don't you lay the Bible on the communion table. Like the table got more authority than the Bible. Don't you dare touch. Look at everybody mad that said that and... That's why I'm cool with having one of our 
members standing at the door holding a tray on your way in for you to get communion. Because we gave more rules to it than the book gave to us. We wouldn't touch that communion table. That's easy. I could just walk around that and that ain't but one time a month. Then on top of that, if we weren't supposed to touch it, why grandmama and them back there making it up? Ain't nobody ordained grandmama. Ain't nobody laid their hands on them. Your cousin that back there preparing it and stuff, touching the table, you got to put the sheet over it. Why for you get to touch it? And you got a preacher that ain't been ordained, but he can't touch it. I hope y'all come back next week. I really do. I really do. I, 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 if you give me another chance, I'll... <laughs> That's when you know you're pleading. When you got to take your fingers like this and say, if you give me another chance. I... We wouldn't touch that table, but that was our replacement for touching God's anointed. So we won't walk across the pulpit, but we'll disrespect the one that stand up there every week to proclaim the word of truth. He says, so you are taking your teachings that are commandments of men and spewing them over into people as if God said it. And we are living our lives more so by church antics and persuasions and influences and we're doing it at the expense of what God said. So we have majored in the minors and we have minored in the majors. That's why we keep coming up with stuff and titles in church like, you know, first ladies and all that stuff. No, that's the pastor's wife. How are you going to create a title with somebody's wife? Then be talking about your preferences. You know, the kind of first lady that I want, she ain't called to you. She ain't called to you. I'll be doggone if the church gonna turn my wife into something I don't want. So now you a good first lady, but a horrible wife because somebody pushed you into an arena to have a job at the church that God didn't call you into. I'll be doggone anybody else going to tell my wife what to do. The devil is a lie. <laughs> you on off the chain this morning. I like preaching when you at church. I know I'm going to get some amens. You and Miss Angela, I appreciate y'all. <laughs> I'm done because I don't have a hoop or a holler for you today. I don't have all that for you. Because I just had to drop that nugget in your spirit. Because I need us to understand that if you connect to this place, watch this. You, I have to be anointed as a leader to do what I'm doing. Hear me. But you have to be anointed to be a member here. Do you hear me? I said that and I mean that. You, you can come in average, but you're going to have to quickly shift to another level. Because what God has on our lives and on our ministry, we, we don't have time to sit around waiting on people who are pretending to be slow but really want to procrastinate. It's 
stay right there because I want to pray today. I want to pray that we would make a real true decision, a real true decision that I would rather be spiritual than traditional. Don't try to put me in your boxes. I'm claustrophobic for a reason. I don't like tight spaces. I don't like elevators. I don't like being in tight stairwells. I, I don't like little cars. I like to see them, but I don't want one. I don't want to drive one. I had to drive with the windows down and the top down. I, can't, I don't like tight spaces. That's in the natural, but it's also in the spiritual. And I don't like tight spaces because I don't believe that my God likes tight spaces. He said when he, in creation, he said, let them have dominion. That means you're going to have to have some freedom. You're going to have to have some territory, some space. Jabez said, oh, that thou hast blessed me indeed and enlarge my territory. And just keep your hand up on me with this enlarged territory so that no evil will come up on me and so I won't cause any evil to come to anybody else. So, somebody just do this right here. I need me some social distance in this season of my life. I need to be able to spread my wings and mount up on wings as an eagle so that I can run and not be weary and walk and not faint. And I refuse to be boggled down and bound down with some stuff that people want to dump on me that God never put that weight on my shoulders. The devil is a liar. I'm opening my heart. I'm opening my arms. I'm opening my mind. I'm expanding. I'm believing God for increase. I don't feel guilty if I don't do it like everybody else do it. I don't feel bad if I ain't a preacher like every other preacher. I don't feel bad if I'm not a pastor like every other pastor. I don't feel bad about buying a store instead of a church building because I know what God is doing. And when you know what God is doing, you got to go after it with all of your might. All I'm trying to tell you is, if God didn't say it, I don't have to receive it. If God didn't make it a command in his word, but it's just your philosophy, what works for you works for you. If, if you're a lady and you wear dresses, do it because you chose to, not because you're supposed to. Do it because you chose. If, if we put on white on the first Sunday, it's because we said, hey, let's just wear white. Not because God told us we're supposed to. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray today that a weight becomes lifted off of our spiritual chest so that we don't have to come in church feeling uptight as if we have to be something or do something that you have not instructed us to do. We would rather obey God than to obey man. That's in your word. So, Father, I pray that you would deliver us from the bondage that we love so much. Free us. Open us up today. Open that cage. We don't want to sing in the cage anymore. But we sing because we're happy. And we sing because we're free. Your eyes are on the sparrow. We know that you watch after us. And we give you praise and we give you glory for giving us this release today. Bless now this divine connection that it shall forever work for our good.
We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. In the name of our Jesus, we pray. Somebody just lift your hands and thank God today. Thank God today. Now praise him how you want to praise him. You're free to do that. If you're in this room today and you've not given your life to Jesus Christ, I want to extend that first invitation to you. I want you to join me right here at the altar. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, you are not saved. This invitation is for you. Along with that invitation, if you have accepted Christ but you're in need of a church home, if you're in this room, I want you to join me right here at this altar. Come stand right here by me. If you are looking for a church home, you've been visiting our church, you've been coming here, but you have not connected with us. Uh, I'm your preacher, but I'm not your pastor yet. Connect with us on today. This invitation is extended for you. If you're watching us on Facebook or by way of YouTube, if you've not accepted Jesus as your Savior and Lord of your life, you can do that even right now. Simply put in the comment section, I accept Jesus Christ today. I'll personally reach out to you. And I want to have prayer with you on today and welcome you into the body of Christ. Or if you are saved and you want to join our church, you can join online. Simply put in the comment section, I want to join FCC. And again, I'll reach out to you as well. We love for you to be a part of our church family. I would love to be your pastor. Now, we're about to give in this room. We're about to sow seed in this room. We're about to give from the abundance of our hearts. The gospel is free, but we understand it costs money to do ministry. So we're giving, not even because of that, though, but we're giving simply because we love Jesus. And if you love in Jesus is not the reason that you're giving today, don't worry about giving, okay? But if you love the Lord and he's been good to you and he's blessed you and you're able to give, we encourage you to sow. Uh, the baskets are being passed around here. We have envelopes for you if you would like to give. On Facebook, YouTube, if you want to give, you can cash app, dollar sign, the number four, W-O-R-D-C-C, four word C-C, dollar sign, the number four, W-O-R-D-C-C. If you want to give specifically to our building project, um, helping us with cost to continue to do some renovation and cost to pay this baby off. Uh, we are over halfway the mark from doing that. Uh, it was originally 150, close to 60,000 now. Um, if 60 people gave a thousand dollars right now, we pay it off tomorrow. All right, or a thousand people gave sixty dollars, we pay it off tomorrow. So um, that's what our goal is in terms of that. But if you want to give to our building project. Dollar sign, the number four, future home, number two, is the number for that. Thank you guys so much for helping us to do that. We're giving in this room. Then I got a, two more things to share with you, then we're done. Unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy. Worthy. For he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy. Worthy. For he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. 
for he is worthy, worthy, yes he is good, yes he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes he is good. Thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes he is good. To the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. For He is worthy, worthy. For He is good. Yes, He is good. For He is worthy, worthy. For He is good. Yes, He is good. For He is worthy, worthy. For he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes he is good. All right, write this down y'all. Next Sunday, our service will begin at 10 o'clock a.m. Not 10.34, but 10 a.m. So we started 34 minutes earlier, so y'all come on in get a good seat and let's bless God. The reason is uh, I'll be going right down the street, literally right here on Avenue C to Pleasant Hill Baptist Church. Uh, Pastor Bates is celebrating his 39th pastoral anniversary. We went there a couple of years ago uh, for his anniversary. And so I'll be there next Sunday. That service starts at 11. So we're going to come here and do ours at 10 and then we'll make our shift to go over there. So if you want to roll with us, uh, by all means, do that as well. All right, that's number one. Secondly, don't forget Bible study. Wednesday, 6.45 p.m., our Bible studies are splendid. I love it. I love the atmosphere. I love the people that are coming out. I want you to be a part of it. Wednesday nights and Sundays are just the same, okay? No difference in that, all right? Yesterday, thank you guys so much for those of you who brought your children out. Uh, we watched Space Jam. I went to sleep on it a little bit, but we thank God for the kids that came out. Um, everybody that worked out toy, you did an excellent job on setting it up and getting everything situated. So we thank God for those of you who came out. Don't forget July 31st. That's the back to school giveaway. So any supplies that you pick up um, between now and then, start bringing them here on Sundays and on Wednesdays. Paper, sanitizers, crayons, pencils. Anything that you run by. Is that tax-free thing still today? It, it ended or it, it ends today. So, okay, so we still got a little more time. Um, whatever supplies you can get tax-free, go on and, and pick it up today. And thank God for that weekend that you ain't got to pay none of them things. Yeah. All right. But I love y'all. Thank you so much. Uh, there's going to be, I'll, I'll give them a sneak preview uh, some trials for individuals that want to be a part of the praise team real soon. I'm going to get with the worship leader and see what, how we going to float that. So for those of you that can sing a little bit, now if you can't sing at all, she going to tell you we're going to put you at another ministry. But if you can sing a little bit, we're going to go and do it. Because they've been sounding so good. Y'all sound, sound good and you look good. I mean that from the very bottom of my heart. And I can't say enough about the band, man. They Oh! see what I'm talking about <laughs> made me want to put a stew step on it right there but I love y'all thank y'all so much let's stand let's get ready to head out on today I love y'all be safe be careful I have an awesome time this week don't let um, the enemy get underneath your skin oh yeah let me say this too let me say this too last but certainly not least I'm going to prepare you now so you can pace your anger over the next seven days. But after next Sunday, the 25th, which is next Sunday, that Monday through Friday, the week after that, I'm taking a mental break. All right? I, I just feel like I need to just sort of relax a little bit. So any calls you have, call the church number 205-690-3922. 
if I don't answer, it ain't because I'm acting funny. It's just because I'm not going to answer. All right? <laughs> I, I need that time to relax my head, my mind, my spirit. So anything that she says is just like me saying it. All right? That's my COO right there. So call her with any questions or comments or concerns you need. If it ain't death, all right? It can wait till I get back, but I need that mental break, which means that I will not be doing the daily prayer week after next. I won't be getting up early in the morning for that. I just need to relax my mind so that uh, I can retire and not die in office. Okay? So if y'all would help me with that, I really, really, really would appreciate it. I love y'all so much. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. We thank you for what our eyes have seen, ears have heard, and hearts have felt. Thank you for your word, for the truth of your word, for the validity of your word. Thank you for every seed sower. Bless 30, 60, as a matter of fact, just bless 100 fold for every seed that has been sown, that the same anointing that rests on this ministry will rest in our families. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy, the king immortal, invincible, the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. All God's children said, amen. I love y'all. Be good. God bless you again, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. As you can see, I'm right here with my, my boy, my son, my mini-me. This is Micah. He wanted to say hello to everybody. Tell him, hey. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Love this little kid right here. But thank you all so much for tuning in. I pray that you've been blessed and encouraged and inspired and informed and actually elevated by this word. The word of God and our faith and Christendom, the church, is too powerful for us to live our lives based upon something that God has not even commanded or commended. I want to encourage you today to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might and to be more spiritual than we are traditional. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for all that you've done in our lives. Thank you for keeping us by your grace, by your mercy, and by your power divine. Bless now our divine connection to continue to work for our good. In Jesus' name, amen. If you are ever in the Inslee area, drop by. The address is right there on the screen. We would love to see your face in the place right here at the Forward Christian Center. In the meantime, between time, keep moving forward.